welcome to another video. Today's video is about Hello everybody and welcome to another video. Again, another non-Einstein video. Aren't you people lucky? Today I have this. A Sinclair ZX Spectrum Plus 2 128K. But it's not just a Sinclair 128K Spectrum Plus 2. Oh no. As you can see, it's black. So, can you read on there? Spectrum Plus 2A. Now, I seem to remember that the Plus 2As were more rare. They were the second release, and there's not as many as the grey ones. Now, I've got a grey one boxed in storage, um, which I refurbed many years ago before I started doing this YouTube channel. So this time, this is Daddy's computer. It's a new one that has been bought for him by my brother for his birthday. But, as you will see soon, there are some issues with it. The tape drive is noisy, the reset button doesn't work, the U key when I got it was actually stuck down, which looks like it's okay now. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take it apart, tear it down, clean it. I think replace the tape um, belt because I've got a spare one somewhere. I don't know where that is. I'm going to have to find that. And then try and get it working and less noisy. It squeaks quite a lot. The actual machine itself does work. It loads um, pool, I think my brother said he'd tried and it worked. So I've got... Up here I've got a cassette 50 and I've got um, some Lunar Jetman, Jetpacker, Tick Attack sort of things. So we can try those and see. Um, but yes, so let's take it apart. Oh, in fact, first let's try it and see what we get. Before we take it apart and, and try it and test it and do whatever, I forgot to say um, I've got a SCART cable, so RGB to SCART for it. And I've got a replacement power supply. Now that looks pretty good, I think. Yeah, that looks okay. So that, that and that. So I got these off my brother so I could test it and fix it for him. Um, yeah, what more can I say? Join me as we take the machine apart and we try and fix it and see if we can resurrect the beast for my daddy. A few moments later. Okay, so machine on Mrs. Retrotech's desk with a TV with a SCART socket. Hungry Horace to test. Controversial I know, but you know, he's he's just Hungry Horace. He's a game character. He's Inanimate, he has no feelings, what's the fuss about? I'm going to plug it in and see what happens. Right, plugged in, power light on, no magic smoke, turn the screen on and then let's check. We need SCART for the input source. Okay, so we need go across, go across, go across, go across. Oh, right, okay. External, there we go. Yes. Right, so, as you can see, can you see? Oh, it's a bit, uh... Yeah, it's a bit bright, unfortunately. Right, so... Down to here. Now, I think the problem is, is it squeaks. So, oh, hmm, right, not really a squeak, more of a judder. Yeah, okay, and also.
yeah also can you see that it might be a bit too bright I'm not sure you can see it but I can physically see that screen flickering when I press anything on the the, um, the cassette port so also I'm going to try which side is it on yeah that side the reset button so the reset button is oh there okay so how can we do this if I move that over to there like that reset button is here Yes, it's only working every other go. So, if I press it once, it doesn't work. Yeah, so that was pressed once very thinly, very, very, very lightly. Press it. Second time, doesn't reset. Third time, resets and I've pressed it really in so really press it in see that's just defaulted to spectrum basic now that yeah I think the switch itself so the switch itself in here I think probably needs a, a resolve it's probably got some dry joints so we'll try that that's fine and then now what we'll do is we'll go to 48k basic because this is a 16k game I do believe which way does it go that way does it go that way yeah right okay so we can do J and then quote quote press enter press play that does sound horrendous that nope so that's not working so, as you can see, it didn't load the first bit of the game. But I think we can safely say that the tape drive needs a clean. And I think I've got some isopropanol somewhere. Right. So. So, Hungry Horace is a no-go on this machine I mean to be fair I don't even know if this works um, it's very whited out very washed out hmm okay can't play poor old hungry Horace okay so what we need to do is unplug the power for this Which I've done. TV goes off. Turn the TV off. And I'll put it back on the bench and we'll get it opened up. A few moments later. Okay, so we're back on the uh the desk now. And hopefully, because of the angle of the camera, it um it won't get knocked. So as you can see, or can you see, that is the serial number of the machine that we're dealing with. Um, 68,389 but it does say 01 so I'm assuming it is a revision 1 right so let's have a seat let's do this side first shall we let's do
So let's see. Oh! Oh no! Oh no! A screw fell out and it fell on the floor. There we go. Back, oh, without knocking the camera. Found it. Good. Right, so. Oh. Whoa, oh. Mmm. It's corrosion on that. Yeah. Well, that's not good. Right, so one, two, three, four, five, six. So what hasn't come out then? That one's not come out. And that one hasn't come out. Right, it has now. One of them there. And that one there. Blimey, it looks like I've got dropsy today. That's not good. Right, so here. And that one too. Right. This is what I am not looking forward to. You ready? Okay, so. I take that out of there, which is the power to the tape drive. And lay that down there like that. Oh, yeah. Right, okay. Let's very gingerly unplug that and unplug that which is the keyboard membrane and I want to show you we have things living the web of spiders so I am not surprised that it isn't working well that belt looks quite good though yeah I might have to buy some lithium grease for this but we'll see so first of all oh it's full of Ah, uh, don't know where it's been, uh... Right, okay, so, there is a date code on this. And the date code is... 80517. Now, that would be... 85? Don't know. I wouldn't need to check that. That, um... Yeah. You'd have thought they'd have put like 1984 in it or something like that, but I would say that's May. Maybe, or the 17th of May, 80. No, 88? 88. 88 could be. Anyway, so that's that's the top bit with the keyboard. Yep, I'll put that to one side for the moment, because I want to look at the board here. And yes, as we can see. Right. So, on the plus twos, the power, the reset button is actually on the board. Now, that isn't good, because it means that I'm going to take the board out, which I didn't really want to do. But, it's filthy anyway, so it's going to need a good scrub and a clean. And I can't see, I can't see any... corrosion other than on the fingers there and that's because oh, it's filthy oh so there you go 1988 issue one it's an issue one plus 2a right so it needs a clean It needs the board taken out. Oh, God. The disadvantages of not having an overhead camera. I really must get an overhead camera mount. 
Otherwise, my YouTube videos don't look very professional. Right. I mean, they don't look professional anyway, because they're not, but... Oh, tiny, small screws for the motherboard into the plastic. So we'll keep those to one side. So which way do you think all that was? Bottom, bottom. Just trying to organise so the screws go back in the same place. End, middle, middle, right. Okay, right, so there we go. Hmm. You see? Looks like there may have been some water damage on this. There, there, and there. Oh, <laughs> and there as well. It's either been stored, I would imagine, in a garage or a shed or it's just not been very well looked after so possibly that switch there possibly it just needs a bit of TLC well there's the top that comes off it and the spring itself is stuck in the actual switch. The spring won't come out. Now that, I don't know whether that's a bad thing or not. That goes back on there, right. See that, there was a load of play in that then. The tines there don't look corroded. Just trying to find that. See that there looks a bit a bit crappy the soldering on that, but I think it's factory. So oh look! Another LED. Wonder what that's for. Plus three drive, maybe. So, what looks okay on there? Nothing looks burnt out. No. No. Everything, I think, appears to be okay. Hmm. Oh, look. There's the AY. 38912A. The same that is in the Tatung Einstein, which is here. The same that is in the Atari ST, otherwise that's branded as YM. I think that's the same one. Cool. Two keyboards, two joysticks, tape in. Yeah, see, it looks really grotty, that. Oh, and it still has this where you can do the composite mod. But there's not much point in doing the composite mod because we've got the RGB to the SCART. And that's all we need. Just blow the crud out of there. Mm. The fingers on the joystick ports look a bit corroded as well, look a bit tarnished. Right, so, motherboard, out. Case, minging. Let's just give it a quick once over.
right. So that is nice and clean now. And because they're black, there's no point in retro brightening it. There's no need, I don't think. What I could do, what I could do, is if I get this from here, use my window lean, all the cleaning products are available, and a couple of minging cloths. So, uh, let's just see whether this makes a difference, shall we? Probably not, but it might just bring the shine up a bit. Well, it gets rid of all the dust that's stubborn anyway, that's for sure. And all the bits that the paintbrush missed. Wow. Right, I'll leave that to one side to fully dry. Shouldn't take too long. That goes down there. And then we get this. Oh, can you see can you see all the all the crud that's come out of it? literally it's oh that's disgraceful that in fact I'm going to move the motherboard to this side out of the way so it gets no more dust on it huh. just thought I saw some corrosion then but I didn't so it's there next to my Einstein right so to take the keyboard out we have to take those two off and then the keyboard. So, should we give that a go? One of those there. One of those there. Does that one come off? No, it's just three. Don't be stupid, Michael. Okay, so three. That moves over to one side like that. And then there's just detritus. And as you can see, there are cobwebs. I mean, that's just disgraceful. I'm sorry. It's obviously been unloved, this machine. So at least now it will get some love at Daddy's house. Oh, I hope it does. So I'm not wasting my energy doing this and he doesn't play it. The whole point was, is that this was bought so we could play pool which is a very old, old Spectrum game, and also Snooker. We have pictures of him from the 1980s playing the Snooker game on the old Spectrum 48K. Okay, so that to one side. Keyboard out. Right, so... Again, it's filthy. So, I don't know if you can pop these keys off. So let me have a look. I've got my key popper somewhere. Where is that gone? Where has my key popper gone? Oh, I just noticed as well. Oh, there it is. Oh, my X-Acto knife was sticking up with the blade upwards. That's not good. Okay, so, key top remover. Oh, okay. So, springs inside. Is it worth taking apart? Let's see whether these clean or not first. Oh, there's a spring within a spring. Oh, be careful we don't lose those. Does it look better? What do we 
we think. So it does actually. Oh, damn, I was hoping I didn't have to take all these keys off. Right, out with the phone. Photograph so I know which way the keys go. Could do the box to put these in, really. Do I really want to do that? Is it is it worth it for the amount of time that he's going to play on it? See, be careful when you pick your, your cloths up off the desk that it's not actually connected to any of your screws from your motherboard because I've just lost two down on the floor. Ah! Struth, there we go. Right, maybe I just give it a once over like this then. If anybody else has refurbished the spectrum like this, leave a comment to link in your video. I'd love to see how you did it. I do watch a few people who have done these refurbs, um, and we all do them slightly different. Like this one really is quite haphazard, but I just want to make sure it works for him, so he can have it as his birthday present, because that was actually last week. And it's taken me this long to get time to do the refurb. Oh no, we need to do that, because look... Damn. Right. I'm going to have to take all the keycaps off. I'm going to have to clean all the keys. Right, I've got a pot. I'll put all the key tops in there. Along with the springs. So they all got springs. So, very quickly, by I take this keyboard apart, there's little black clips here that we need to take this bottom bit off because otherwise those keys don't come off I mean look how minging it is, it's disgraceful but yeah so while I'm taking the keyboard off we need to click these off which I'm going to do now and then take this plate off and then we should be able to take the keyboard out completely yeah it's popping off nicely that there we go there we go Mm, there's bits inside it as well, so it's more dirty than I thought. Right, onwards and upwards. Right, keys out, cleaned with a brush. That's what came out of it. I mean, yeah. Oh dear. And it also looks like there's water got into the keyboard membrane. Can you see there? So, what I want to try and do, if I can, is get my cleaning product on it and clean off some of this. Yeah, good. Right, one thing I have noticed is the keyboard membrane is crimped very slightly there in that corner. It's not as it's not as free flowing as that one. It seems to be a bit, a bit bent. But we'll see. Right. Can we now get all that horrible gankiness off there? Yes, actually we can. Right, I think what I need to do is can we if I tear a bit of that cloth up like so and then 
using tweezers we can get a good cleaning route The um, some keys have like metal retainers. Probably the way you're going to get your massage key off on the way out. Maybe put it on the back of the shoe. This is why. So um, it's not going to be too bad. Right, I'm waiting for everyone to tap that. It's still not going to stay, but you can turn it down a little bit. You know what I'm going to get out of So that's the reason. I'm going to say that I'm done with that. Brilliant. Nice. Okay. So I've got. Potter keycaps and springs and the bigger keys which needed those bracing struts are separate here to one side. So I'm going to clean all these now. In fact, I think I'll put all the springs back in this pot because if I lose them, the keyboard is not going to be very nice to use. We don't want a squishy keyboard, do we? Right. So while I'm putting those in there, I'll show you what I'm going to do with each of these keys. With each of these keys, they've all got minging dust on them, so I'm just basically going to rub all five sides. So, left, right, up, down, top, bottom, left, right, and then the face of the cap. And that, thankfully, doesn't need retrobriting. I'm going to do this for all of the keys and I'm not going to show you because it's such a boring process and it will take probably about 40 minutes to do all the keys I won't do them properly so um, when I come back next time the keyboard will be ready to be put back all the keycaps to be ready to put back into there and we'll reassemble it and see what we get right okay so all the keycaps have been cleaned so there's no dust at all on them and they're all nice and not shiny, they're all quite rough actually, which means typing should be easy. The springs are not missing from the insides of each of these. And the bag of springs from each key is here. So, oh look at that, wish that had not happened. There we go. <laughs> Careful when you put your springs in a box, they get all uh, tangled together. Right, so the next thing to do is replace the keys that have got the special bracing brackets on, so that's like the um, the shift, the caps, the edit key, I think, the return and the shift and things like that. So I'm going to put the keys, the key tops, back on here now in their correct position. And then in the next part of this video, I'm going to put the membrane back on and then screw the metal base back on and then plug it back into the keyboard and we'll see whether we fix the keys or not. They weren't sticky but it makes it look nice. And then onto the cassette deck. That one's in, that one's in, space bars in and that one's in. So I thought I'd show you how to fit these little retainer bars. Now this is the last one, yep, yeah, which goes to that shift key there. So, they're actually sized, so that's bigger than that one. It's the same size as that one there, same size as that one there. So the way that I've found to do it is you push the key in, so push the, push the key up, and then lay that flat in there like so, and then pull pull down and click there we go and that's in and that's the full retaining which means they're nice and springy oh and don't forget to put the um, the spring back in underneath the keycaps as well otherwise you have to pop them off again back soon when all the keys are done right so keyboard back together Membrane in, back plate on. I think you'll agree that that looks way better than it did before. 
so that's nicely cleaned no finger juice no dust bunnies nicely refurbished and all the keys function and spring back and they all sound nice brill right next bit then tape drive so I'm going to have to do a bit of investigation for this and then see what's going on and I'll show you what I find out soon a few moments later right so the outside of the case is as bad as the inside so the inside of the cassette player I've cleaned out with my brush more dust bunnies the mechanism does seem okay what we have got is a piece of like it's like white and it won't come off with the with the window cleaning thing so I've got a piece of magic eraser now this only works when it's wet so let's wet it up and then that white there should go away and in fact it does wow and it really makes that Sinclair bright as well and the Spectrum logo Sorry for my hand being in the way. I'll just do a bit of the cleaning there with the magic eraser. And that's what came off it. So these are great. These are a pound, I think, at somewhere like Home Bargains or B&M. I can't remember where. But I buy loads of them because they're really good. And then you get your cloth. And you rub it in all the crooks and nannies no don't do that don't rub it in your nanny so it didn't actually it took that one off but not that one so we need to try that a bit more yeah there we go it just needed a bit more scrubbing Look at that. It's gone. Brilliant. So yes, highly recommended for doing refurbs. And also I've noticed that on some plastics it takes the yellowing off so you don't need to do retro bright. I know I tried it as you'll see on one of the previous videos for the Einstein refurbishments and testing. I used a bit of that magic eraser and it appeared to take the yellow off the Einstein. So that's brilliant. Something I have noticed as well is that there's water cleaning got in under the plastic case here. Oh dear. Apologies for my arm being away. So here, under this plastic case, the water has got in. So I need to, uh, I need to clean that if I can. I don't know how I'm going to do it. I need to get something under that plastic lid. Oh, there we go. And then something else in this corner to dry it with. Yeah, just like that. I really should do a proper refurbishment on this, but it means taking the plastic off and resitting it with um, double-sided tape, and I'm not sure I've actually got any that's good enough. So, because it's working, I will leave that as it is. I've got no qualms about giving that to my dad. Like that. It's way better than it was. In fact, 
right, I should use one of these microfiber cloths, I think it's just really just give it one final clean. Have we got have we got some gam down there? No, I think that's as clean as it's gonna be. Right, so white has gone from there. White has gone from there, which is great. Yeah, brilliant. Okay, last thing to do, I reckon, then, is possibly clean, clean the tape heads. Now, I haven't got any isopropanol with me. I haven't got any on me at the moment, so what I will do, I can find, oh, where have they gone? Now, I did have somewhere out there oh dear always the case when you're looking for something you can never find it oh there they are one minute right found what i was looking for q-tips but these are really bad ones these because these are nasty plastic shafted ones <laughs> plastic shaft um yeah so these are really non-recyclable which is terrible the new ones that i've been buying are cardboard paper that makes a hell of a difference. Now, because I've got no isopropanol, I could probably use the window lean. I don't really want to try and do that, but it may work just as well. So, let's try that. Damp on that side. Squeeze off the excess, because it's not needed. Look what I've done. Look what I've done. I've got cleaning products all over the nice case that I have just cleaned. Doodars. Right, there we go. Okay, so if we do very carefully do that very, very gingerly. and then clean that runner as well and then there's the compression wheel which is here and you can see that probably not so I don't know whether that was slipping or not No. Right. Very gorilla. Doing it this way with my finger. An IPA would be way better. But as I say, I don't have any. So for the moment, that's as good as it's going to get. Right, so now, what I need to do is put everything back as it was. Which means... The keyboard goes back in there.
Yeah, brilliant. Okay, so one last push down of the chips because they all cracked in before. There we go. Okay. Now, top goes back on. So we push. Oh, now, this is the bit that could be a bit tricky. Right. Oh, there we go. You need to use two hands to push any of these in. There we go. Brilliant. So they're in there now. This comes over here. And it only goes in one way. Which is that way. And then that goes back. On there, like that. Now... Before I put any screws back in, I think I'm going to go and test it on the on the TV, and then we'll see if it's working. I'll screw it all back up, and then the job's a good one. Right, all plugged in. Definitely needs lithium grease because it's still noisy. But let's try. Let's try Horace go skiing again. No, let's try Hungry Horace again, sorry. So, tape in. Load, quote, quote. Dash. Right, so Hungry Horus failed. Let's try again, shall we? Let's try Cookie. Oh, we see the reset didn't work there. Ah, now it did. There we go. Right, so let's try. Rewinding cookie. Mm. I think it's the tape belt. So. Oh yes, it looks like the tape itself is actually struggling. I don't know whether you can see this or not. Yeah, see, look. The belt is slipping.
so it's not rewinding very well. Right, I think I need to find this tape belt. A few moments later. Right, because I can't find the um, the tape drive belt, I don't know where it's gone. I'm going to have to buy another one. So, that is refurbished up to a point where the cassette drive is still squealing. Now, this video has gone on long enough, so I will finish it here. Um, and hopefully, maybe do a part two with actually putting this tape drive belt in. That might be an idea. But anyway, for the moment, I hope you found it informative to see what was inside the Spectrum 128 Plus 2. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell icon to get notifications when I upload more content. Give this video a thumbs up. Like the video. Leave me a comment. And thank you very much for watching. Goodbye. Don't forget to subscribe. Click the bell icon for new video notification. Bye bye. See you in the next video.